Namaste to everyone. Namaste, Sir Mulajidhi. Good morning. Welcome to the morning session. Ji, namaste. Namaste, Tara Prasanna Ji. Sabhi ko namaste. Good morning and welcome. We are doing UHV3. And in UHV3, we have come up to lecture 16. We were talking about the existence, trying to see in some detail about the existence. We've done this in the foundation course also, but now it will be in little more detail. So if you look at what we, what we said we will try to do, when we say right understanding or knowing, it means that we are trying to get to knowing of the reality the way it is. What do we mean by the reality? Everything that exists, that is reality. What is, how it really is? Is it the way we perceive it? Or is it something beyond that? So getting to know it the way it really is. Who is the knower? I am the knower. I will try to see it within myself. What do I need to see? We said the entire existence, everything that exists. So earlier we spoke of the human being. We tried to understand, we tried to have knowledge of the human being. Now we are going to work on the understanding of existence. And then when we have some knowledge of human being and of existence, then we can find out about human conduct. So now if we are looking at or trying to see, understand the existence the way it is, what is the process? The process for this is awakening to the higher activities. Why is that? We said that's because at the level of the lower activities, you see only the gross things. As you move from the lower to the higher activities, as you awaken to the higher activities, you are able to see more and more and more subtle things. And ultimately at the level of realization, the activity of realization, you are able to see the subtlest of all realities, that is the space. So we may, it may seem far from, for, from us, but the process once we have begun, we know the path, where to go. It is just a matter of paying attention and persisting. Paying attention inside. So as we awaken to the activity of contemplation, we'll be able to see the relatedness of the units with one another, all the units, including myself including the body, including other units, every unit. This is the natural characteristic. This we are able to see through contemplation. And when we see the relatedness, a natural outcome of that is, I see my role in the relationship, my participation in the relationship. Then if we go to understanding, activity of understanding, we are able to see the harmony that is there in every unit. That every unit is in harmony by itself. It is self-organized. That is its innateness. It just happens to be that way. So, if you see the self, we happen to be this way that whenever we have a feeling 
that is not in line with the natural acceptance we become unhappy we cannot change that we have a choice to have what kind of feeling we want but it is certain that when we have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable we are bound to be unhappy that we cannot change that we don't have a choice about that is our self organization similarly in the body also you can see body has a certain self organization it has all these cells each cell by itself is functioning in a certain way without somebody giving orders do this do that it is doing in a very self organized way you don't have to give specific orders to each cell it is also seeing its relatedness and participating with other cells and these cells form tissues they form organs they form organ systems and ultimately the whole thing is working for this entire body there are trillions of cells how many things possibly can go wrong if you make a machine you have to take care of so many things so this is like a very complex very uh, self organized unit where things are happening in a very you know definite manner so like that you will see for every unit there is this harmony within the unit the self organization and ultimately like we said when we awaken to the activity of realization we will be able to see the space we will be able to see this entire existence as coexistence that is these units submerged in space so this is what we are going to study in this lecture and um yesterday we had given a brief assignment to reflect on the various activities within ourselves and how we tend to focus on the form of different units so we see the units as separate we see the gap between the units and we say that this is a separate unit sometimes we also are able to pay attention to the property of the units the impact that one unit has on another but we have to look beyond this also we have to look at that which is definite that which is unchanging because all these things are changing the form will change the properties will change isn't it so if anybody has any thoughts any reflections on this we can take them yes bali ji reddy namaskar madam namaskar to all namaste so uh, if i reflect uh, on the uh, means what uh, the various activities uh, within the self uh, like uh, selecting tasting and up to realization even though i have not if i observe uh, the different units uh, uh, seeing the gap uh, between them actually microscopically uh, but if i see the property impact of one uh, unit on the other suppose if i let us say uh, take my bath the water goes where it is going and it is uh, going into the uh, ground and the ground layers are such that uh, they filter them filter always they filter and uh, water takes uh, plants take that water different creatures take that water uh, so that uh, means uh, in, in in which way this impact also is there my impact on uh, other unit is uh, un unknowingly it is there yeah, i need not do anything its impact is there and uh, suppose if i take a cow uh, it will give its participation let us say it will give milk and i will take it 
and different people will take and uh, it's innateness it takes grass uh, other things it does not take but other things are taken by some other uh, it is happening by itself and uh, what i observe i may uh, my physical form may not be there the cow's physical form may not be there plant's physical form may not be there but the innateness this uh, the process what is happening that is permanent what i have uh, what i am observing and uh, in which they are uh, there that space is uh, there it is not changing and what i observed uh, what i feel in its pure form is not changing suppose uh, uh, my natural uh, what can i say acceptance Def always i uh, try to seek happiness only and uh, uh, suppose animals always uh, uh, they try to uh, uh, means what live within they means what uh, will in i and uh, the trees they grow uh, and uh, uh, they again they die so uh, what i am observing depending upon different orders uh, the, uh, what can i say suppose let us take uh, my uh, uh, human beings uh, 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 the uh, what can i say the desire uh, and uh, the desire to be happy always that is uh, not changing in its pure form and the space is not uh, changing L like this i am observing madam yeah so we are reflecting on it yeah 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 observing. yeah yeah we are not able to directly see this perhaps. i cannot see just i observe only but, no observe means directly seeing so ah, we are directly seeing directly seeing thinking about it no? we are yeah, directly seeing about. madam and so, uh, one more thing uh, the generations together generations together we are going we are uh, uh, means what uh, uh, births are taking place deaths are taking place but the universe is always there that i am observing just we are a part of there that. also we'll see you know births and deaths for a human being means what mm. no we'll see we'll talk about it yeah we'll yeah even when we say innateness of a particular say plant mm, madam what is innate to it is that it exists and it grows. Oh, oh, oh. exists and grows. That also, uh, what can I say, a physical form goes. But that character is not going now, madam. Uh, the orderliness uh, in the space. Wait, wait, wait. Don't just bring in words like that. Okay. Anyway, we'll discuss, we'll do a more detailed study of it. Okay, okay. Of the nature of the four orders then it will become more clear. Okay, madam. Yeah. We are just starting that journey of working mm -hmm. on understanding the existence. Okay. The assignment was just to reflect on what we are able to see right now. Mm -hmm. But we need to go beyond that. We need okay. to see something beyond that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, madam. Thank you, madam. Um, let's go a little further. We can go to the next slide. Yeah. So now if you look at the existence, understanding of existence, this will include nature obviously this will include all the units and it will also include space existence in the form of coexistence where all these orders of nature are coexisting with one another in this entire existence. So we will look at that. Next slide. Yeah. So if we look at the existence, existence is in the form of coexistence. We have been saying that. 
coexistence is ever present, ever effective, ever expressive. What does that mean? It is there. It is not changing. You see some forms change on the surface, but at the base, it is just there. We can see generation after generation after generation. It is just there. The expression of this coexistence in the form of nature. Remember, we tried to talk about it in the form of four orders. Because you will find these four orders, they have their own distinct characteristics. And the, the fact that these are coexisting, coexisting means they are all submerged in space. All these units, they are submerged in space. And this coexistence is expressing itself in the form of this harmony, this innateness of every unit, the self-organization of every unit, how it keeps going. And how each unit is seeing its relationship with every other unit and fulfilling that relationship in a very definite manner. This is the natural characteristic. Now, these are things that are unchanging. The submergence is unchanging. The innateness of the units is unchanging. The natural characteristic of the units of being able to see the relationship and participating in the relationship, you know, recognize, recognizing and fulfilling in a definite manner. All this is not changing. So we just need to understand it. And we can understand it when we awaken to the higher activities within us. So we keep saying as relationship. And how much of this we can see depends on how much we have awakened to the higher activities. So we may have it as information. We may be able to say the same words, but directly observing is something beyond that. Being able to see it within me directly, then I really know. Otherwise, it is just you know, I'm saying something, you are hearing it, you either believe it or you disbelieve it. That is not the same as direct observation. Ultimately, knowing any reality has to do with direct observation. So that I can say for myself that yes, I know. Not that somebody told me and I'm just believing it. So that is what we are trying to do here. We are trying to awaken to the higher activities and trying to directly see how things are for ourselves. This is all we have to do. We have to understand this entire coexistence. That is our purpose. We are here to have this knowledge to finally understand how things really are not what I assume them to be, but how they really are. And then living with that, having that feeling, having that thought, living with that in coexistence, in this entire coexistence. And I may not be able to see it now, but as I keep doing this, As I keep doing this, I am able to 
see that this is like a resolution to all the issues that I have. And when I fulfill this role, when I live with this feeling and thought of coexistence, then I can have continuous happiness. We may not be able to see it right now, but we can keep it open. Yes, Baliji Reddy is there. Uh, yes, please. Madam, my doubt has already I have expressed in chat also. Madam, how mm -hmm. can coexistence mean uh, submergence? Coexistence means submergence in the sense the units are submerged in space. Mm, that is okay. Hmm? Being in space, these units are coexisting with one another. Mm, yes, madam. Now, if you see space, space is ever present. Oh, yes, madam. It is there, you know, in between the units. It is there in, inside the units. It is there outside the units. It is there all around the units. Everywhere there is space. Mm, madam. All these units are submerged in this space. And because, I won't say because, but being in space, it so happens that all these units are, you know, coexisting. The expression of that coexistence is, you see how these units are participating with one another. There is a relatedness between them. There is an innateness to them. There is a self-organization. So we'll come to it. What are the characteristics of these units that are submerged in space? Yeah, does it help? Okay, okay madam. Thank you. Okay, so um, we can go to the next slide. Yeah. So existence is in the form of coexistence which is in the form of units submerged in space. Now, being in space, these units have certain characteristics. First of all, they are energized in space. They all have some energy. You'll notice for every unit, you look at the sun, it has energy. You look at the earth, it has energy. It is going around the sun. All that is happening. How is it happening? It's just happening. That's how it is. It has energy for all this. Who provides the energy? We don't know. We can just say that there is energy. It is self-energized being in space. Every unit is self-organized being in space. So that is another thing that you can see. It's always happening that the earth goes around the sun in a very definite manner. It never happens that this changes direction. It's going in a very particular manner. So it is between the units, there is some relatedness. And these units are recognizing their relationship and fulfilling their relationship with every other unit in space. So it's happening in a very definite manner. It doesn't change. Things are, you see for any unit. So you'll notice that every unit it has some activity and it seems to have this energy for this activity. It is self-organized and it is recognizing its relationship 
and fulfilling that relationship with every other unit in space. Next slide. Now, we said that existence is in the form of coexistence and it is in the form of units submerged in space. Now you'll see that these units, their characteristics are very different from the space. We said that the space is there, it is all pervading. Units are not. Units are limited in size. So you, look, you can look at small units, you can look at atoms, subatomic particles. They're very tiny units, limited in size. You look at bigger units, still limited in size. You look at the earth, bigger unit, limited in size. Sun, even bigger unit, still limited in size. So you'll find that all the units are limited in size. And they are active. Some activity or the other is going on within the units. Any unit you see, it is happening. Some activity is going on. This is why we said, you know, activity is going on. Where are they getting the energy? They are self-energized. They are just energized in space, being in space. On the other hand, if you look at space, Space is not limited. Space is unbounded, unlimited. And the other interesting thing is, space is no activity. So the units are active. As coexistence, there is activity in the units. But if you look at the space, space is no activity. Then if you look at the units, there are two types of units. These two types of units are the material units and the consciousness units. So an example that we keep studying is in the material unit, you can see the example of the body. In the consciousness unit, you can see the example of the self. When it comes to the material units, they are temporary. They go through a process. And you can see with the example of the body, there is a process of generation and birth. And a lot of activities are going on, of course, within the unit. And ultimately, there is processes of degeneration and death. So the unit is temporary in the case of the material unit. When it comes to the consciousness unit, the consciousness unit is continuous. It is still limited in size. Remember, we said that the units are limited in size. So when it comes to the size, it is limited. But when it comes to time, then it is not temporary. It is not time bound. It is continuous. We may not be able to see this, but we can get an estimate of it if we look at our needs as the self. My need for happiness, my need for the right feeling. This is a continuous need. My need for happiness is a continuous need. Perhaps because the unit itself is continuous. If I look at the activities going on within me, desire, thought, expectation, we kept trying to see that within ourselves in the exercises. That is also going on continuously. That is also seemingly indicating that there is continuity in the cell. So if we are not able to see it, we can keep it open or not. 
and all of these units are submerged in space. Of course, the space is unlimited in time, unlimited in space, meaning it's not limited in size. It's unlimited in size and it's also continuous in time, unbounded, ever present. Yes. We may have this as information. And at some point, you know, if we keep working on our higher activities, we may be able to see this. Next slide. So this is what we were talking about just now. If you look at, there are three columns here. The first column is regarding the material unit. The second column is regarding the consciousness unit. And the third column is regarding the space. So in the first column, the material unit, you will see that it is limited. Limited in size and temporary in time. It will change the form. The body that is formed ultimately will decay, will go back to the elements from which it was formed. It has degenerated then. So it's a temporary unit. It is limited in size. And, and it is bounded in time. That's what we mean by temporary. And it has activities going on within it. When it comes to the next, the central, this column, which is talking about the consciousness unit, you find that the consciousness unit also has activity like the material unit. All units have some activity. But this is not temporary in time. It is not bounded in time. It is unbounded in time. It is continuous. It's there. It's just there. It doesn't die. But it is still bounded or limited in space. So it is limited in size. So this, this is the difference between this material unit and the consciousness unit. Now when it comes to the space, space is unbounded in time. So it is continuously there. It is ever present. It is unlimited in size also. It is vast. It is unlimited. And third important thing, like we said, space is no activity. So these are, you can look at it as two types of realities, units and space. Or if you split them up, then you can look at it as three types of realities, material units, consciousness units, and space. So when we look at the material units, we also say that they are impermanent. Impermanent means same thing, that they are limited in time, bounded by time. They are not continuous. When we say permanent, it is there. No, it is neither bounded by time nor by space. It is just there. 
any questions we can take them otherwise we'll go forward Okay, next slide. Yes, Bali GVD is there. Madam, uh, I got one doubt. Suppose uh, if this uh, limited uh, consciousness awakens to higher activity and uh, it reaches the highest activity, let us say realization, and uh, let us say different uh, uh, selves are doing like that, then in their highest form, all are similar. Even now they are similar. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, now, yeah, now they are similar, but they are not realizing. But at that time they are realizing. Mm -hmm. And uh, they uh, at that time they will not be uh, bind to, they will not bind to lower activities. So at that time their consciousness uh, uh, means what? Uh, because it is boundless, it is. it may be infinity. Uh, no, no. let's not just uh, say something without really yeah yeah this is a uh, hypothesis only <laughs> no wait wait we said that the consciousness units are limited in size how did you reach infinity once they reach uh, the highest state the nature is same no? it is, it is this, you know it is limited in size the size doesn't change. Uh, but what is unbounded? The consciousness. Unbounded in time. So it is continuous. Okay. And even though it uh, reaches the highest state, it is still uh, unbounded in time, but limited in space. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, madam. That's what I got doubt. Mm -hmm. Thank you, madam. Just yeah. only... Hypothesis, once we experience, we really know and we can directly see. Yes. That's okay, I can accept. Yes. But before that, as a curiosity, I ask uh, the people like you. Thank you, yeah. madam. So we can uh, wait till we directly see. We can yeah, yeah, keep really. Open. Whatever we are not able to see, we can keep it open. Yeah, yeah, really, madam. Okay. Uh, Sri Salem ji. Namaste, madam. Namaste. Uh, that, that a bit more clarification Didi, in this continuous and ever uh, both looks like are continuous or unbounded. Uh, that difference I would like to know a bit more further. Difference between? It's continuous and ever. Yeah, ever present means it is just there. It is infinite and it is there. See, space is unbounded in time also, unbounded in space also, meaning size. So it is, there you can say infinite. But if you are looking at, say, the consciousness unit, consciousness unit is unbounded in time. Yes, it is continuous. But it is limited in size. It is not unlimited in size. Okay? Like the space. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Archana Singer Ji. Namaskar, Didi. Namaste. Uh, Didi, I just want to know one thing. Uh, will we go in detail of uh, the explanation of how the conscious unit is unbounded in time and limited in size and space in further lecture? See, we are curious to know why, how, how. Yeah. Why is it like that? So this is what I was trying to tell you yesterday also. This is how the space is. This is how the coexistence is. Yeah? Where we are. We are a part of it. Mm -hmm. We can't really get those answers of how did it happen or why is it like this and no point getting into all that. It is just there. I need to understand. I need to live by it. This is what my purpose is. What I need to do. Because those answers, you know, you're trying to, you know, we tend to say that because the space is there or there is some God, that God is doing this and that is why it is like this. So those are all many beliefs 
but if we just directly try to observe this we may not be able to but we can keep it open right now that the entire existence this is how it is it is constantly unfolding in expressing itself in these you know units in nature so in the coexistence all these units are active but the space is no activity so that when we are trying to say the cause this is the cause of that we can't say that because there is no activity space is no activity can you see what i'm saying right 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 yeah okay okay thank you ji thank you jagdish babu ji namaste didi namaste to all co explorers um so when we say units has limited in size uh, light is also one unit and uh, it it is also having limited in size um so but um, can we say that light is light wherever we see there is light so that means it has unlimited size no no how can you say like that light means if you look at the sun no the light is coming to us from the sun yeah. yes no yeah we are getting light from sun yeah so now this is you know one effect or one impact of that on the earth and then it has you know with that there is warmth and so many other things no mm. you are getting so many um, benefits like if you look at vitamin d you look at you know so many things are being formed these are all impact of the sun but it is still limited in size we can't say that it is infinite yes Mm-hmm. so when when i have taken this session in the class i was telling students all the units are limited in size one of the student raised this question what mm-hmm. about light mm-hmm. so light uh, i told that light is also limited in size because if you go to space there is this uh, dark holes where there is no light so light also has limited in size so i have seen like that दीदी नमस्ते नमस्ते मैं आदा फ्रेंड दीदी हेलो दीदी आई हैव कॉन्फ्यूजन समथिंग इन दैट unbounded limited consciousness i am my question is consciousness uh, permanent in time so uh, this one okay and then uh, for space permanent in time space permanent in space space is space in space okay uh, but what i understand so permanent in time consciousness permanent in time and space permanent in time space is there okay we may understand permanent in time but okay please please uh, didi just edit on that get confused with if you look at the chart that is displayed no uh-huh. about this um what you are uh, having this confusion about if you look at that in the top uh, row bounded unbounded unbounded before hmm. that you see there is time so we are talking of time there so material units are bounded in time that means they are temporary ha huh, that is correct consciousness units are not bounded in time they are unbounded in time that means huh. they are continuous they are not temporary they are there they they were there they will be there Achha. they are there okay hmm when it comes to the space 
<laughs> also it is unbounded in time it is there it was there it is there <laughs> it will be there Achha. now come to the next row now <laughs> we are talking about size <laughs> it will seem confusing so you use size <laughs> now material units that first column they are <laughs> limited in size ha <laughs> correct hmm? Hmm. Consciousness units are also limited in size. They may be unbounded in time. They are hmm. continuous in time. They are hmm. there, but hmm. they are limited in size. Didi, uh, uh, how does it mean actually? They are in size, self in size. How is it? Uh, we can't see it right now. Ah ha, ha. Correct. For that, we need to develop our competence. Yes. Acha. Activity so that we can directly see that also. Ha, ha, ha. That it is limited in size, but when okay. it comes to the space, space hmm. is unlimited in size. It is unbounded in time also. It is unbounded in size also. Correct. Okay. Does that hmm. answer your question? Ha, ha. Ajay, Didi. Now uh, earlier I had a question I put in the chat box. That is, uh, space is within. Uh, please uh, just highlight on that, please. Space is everywhere. Place is within. So how is it like? Space is everywhere. Ha. Huh. Space is around the units. Ha. Huh. Behind the units, in front of the units, hmm. on the sides of the units. It is also inside the units. Ha. Huh. Inside the unit. That 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 one bridge. Yeah. So if you look at the body. Ha huh. ha. Body has cells that are functioning. All that is happening. No, tissues are formed, organs are formed, but Haan. in between there is also space. Achha. If you look at the self, hmm. self also, this activities are there, imagination, all of this. But Achha. space is also there. How is it? The, this one, the, the please, how if anything. See, that's how it is. That's how you can see. See Haan. when you see the. How do you observe the? The feeling. When Achha. we say observe the imagination, how hmm. are you observing? We said we are observing from the point of the pure observer. Ah. Yeah? Hmm. Now from there we are observing the feeling, which is a lower activity. Ach. How are we observing? There is space between. Ach. Did he? Uh, <laughs> that does mean oh, we say uh, that like that there is a. Uh, distant place we are observing myself. So you are saying that that me and my body that is there is a distances that is space. Yes, Achha. every unit is submerged hmm. in space. Ha. So Achha. every unit is, you know, there, hmm. and space is also there. Space Achha. is everywhere, hmm. not just around the units, inside the units also. Okay. Uh, Didi, here space you are meaning that that there is a distances like you say uh, uh, yeah, my, my body and me. See right now. Achha. We see things distance. What what it means to us might be what we look at through the gross Achha. eyes. Achha, Achha. If I look through the gross eyes, I see there is a tree outside. There is a distance <laughs> between me and the tree. Achha. That we are not referring to as space. Because Achha. there also, if you look microscopically, you will find there are particles, there is air, there are so many things. Hmm. Gases are there, so many things are there. Hmm. Molecules are there. Hmm. Hmm. So there are units in between that also, only we can't see it through the gross eyes. Achha. But those units, the difference is units are activity. Space hmm. is no activity. Hmm. That space we can't see through the gross eyes. We need to hmm. develop our competence, awaken to the highest activity of realization. Then hmm. we can directly observe the space. We may not be able to see it. Hmm. Yeah. So we can. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, Didi. Thank you. Thank you, Didi. Yes, Surya Kanji. Yeah, good morning, Didi. Good morning. Uh, Didi, I want more clarification about the conscious unit limited in space. 
uh, anyway it is clear that it is unbounded in time it is continuous that can be realized about space limited clarification devi that also can be realized it's just that we don't have the competence right now so we have to build our competence to be able to see this space i mean to be able to see this consciousness unit because consciousness unit is much more subtle than the material unit so material units we see directly through the gross eyes we are tuned to that we can say yes i can see it but for units that are smaller like we were just talking about in between the tree and myself there are so many molecules that i may not see no? yes through the gross eyes i cannot see but maybe through a microscope i can see but supposing yeah. it is even more subtle than that then even the microscope the instruments that i have made they i cannot see it no that yes. is how the consciousness unit is far more subtle so i am not able to see right now the size but it is limited in size it's not infinite the any example can possible madam to clarify it example can we give that is that is the way it is but we have to directly see it so right now it may be that we believe it or we don't believe it but we can keep it open if we are doubtful about it Isn't okay it? didi okay no no problem yeah thank you thank you lot of hands are raised but let me just say that you know uh we may not be able to get all the answers to everything that we have questions to because right now our competence is limited yes lata ji uh man actually uh, on the top line actually size bar space is written mm -hmm. time that's what i'm saying don't bar get confused with that space think of it as size because yeah. then the space a is more as word will be size huh because we are using in the in current context we are using space for another purpose that's what so you just think of it as size that's why i already said that size uh, yeah okay thank you yeah um shabnam nirula ji hello uh, yes. ma'am one more doubt ma'am yeah lata ji if you can just wait uh, shabnam yeah. ji is on the line yes shabnam ji namaste didi uh, namaste. i wanted to ask about uh, con the difference or the subtle difference between continuous and ever yeah see when we are saying continuous we are saying only in terms of being there all the time no but when it comes to the size then it's not like a continuous size or unlimited size size is limited but in case of the space it is unbounded in time unbounded in size it is ever present it is all over all so, pervading so continuous would mean like you know it has a it has a beginning and the end and then the new beginning and new end is i mean is it something so like that what do you mean by beginning and end then you are talking of time no then you are saying something starts and then something ends that's not what we are saying we are saying consciousness is there it was there it is there it will be there there's no beginning and end it is just there it is continuous in time but so, it is limited size okay 
so would can i relate it to can can it be related to let's say our life that means uh, what we look at it that this life past life future life something like that i mean the yes. consciousness continues as a human being you are two units right coexisting no body yes. is a separate unit it has separate characteristics it is temporary it is not continuous in time so there you can have a beginning and end isn't it yes body is born it grows it dies beginning end right limited in time consciousness unlimited in time it was there it is there it will be there no beginning no end it's just there okay so uh, in that case can we relate it to that the consciousness uh, would take different bodies like you know i mean like past is saying no what are your sanskars correct going the due after the death of the body and when you take a fresh body also they are continuing with you because they correct. are in the okay got it got it thank you thank you Okay. Neetu Chauhan ji. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes, Neetu. Yes, namaste didi. Mm -hmm. uh, namaste sabhi ko. Am I audible didi? Yeah, you are audible. Yeah, actually I also had doubt about this space didi. Like can I say that like on earth the space is occupied by air? and we when we go beyond then it is not occupied Again, by anything what are, what do you mean by space yeah Anything? that is why that is what i am confused about you are thinking of the gap yes yes so this is not space okay so the gap that i am thinking of that is not space see then you are thinking only in between the units what we are saying is space is ever present it is you know Um, all pervading it is outside the units inside the units around the units everywhere right now we are thinking of yes we are not able to perceive that because we see through the gross eyes so we are yes, yes. seeing these units and we are seeing some gap between the units that's all we can see as of now but yes. if you look at the gap also there are many units in that gap no so many molecules yes. of air and all that we are not able to see that those are also units so we can keep it open we yes, can yes yes i think more. i need to explore more about this yes. and i will come back again sure yeah thank okay. you thank you lata ji were you done or did you have a question actually is there any difference between the first row first row and the, that uh, row which contains temporary continuous ever both refer to the are they referring to the same thing first row really? time bound and then go by words just try to understand what we are saying hmm okay what is bounded in time what is unbounded in time what is bounded in size what is unbounded in size yeah. hmm? um uh, bounded above of uh, so Uh, temporary continuous ever that is also referring to time no um see then you will say that what is the difference between space and the self there are many differences no we said the activity is there in the self there is no activity in the space yeah that is, that is there continuous in time but space not just continuous in time continuous meaning unlimited in size also but when it comes to the self it is limited in size so try to understand it rather than try to you know point out terms words specifically yeah okay we'll have to stop here we have um we are almost out of time so we'll stop here we'll reflect on these things
and we'll come back tomorrow if there are more questions we can take them tomorrow and we'll also go forward in our study of the existence <laughs>